Meet Jeff Turner, a master counterfeiter who printed over a million dollars in U.S. banknotes and earned the title the Picasso of counterfeiting. In his own words, he describes the process as not particularly difficult, relying on extensive trial and error. Turner's counterfeit bills continually improved until his eventual capture. Surprisingly, the Secret Service acknowledged the exceptional quality of his work, deeming the bills the best they had seen in 25 years. Jeff Turner delved into counterfeiting during a financial crisis, triggered by a work-related accident, job loss, and impending housing issues with a newborn. His motivation was to find a quick and safe way to support his family. The primary focus of his counterfeit operations was the 96 series $100 bill, and he also took on the challenge of replicating the 2013 Blue Notes as a personal hobby. The process of creating digital files for counterfeiting consumed two months of meticulous image editing. Turner utilized high-resolution photos from Wikipedia, breaking them down into multiple layers. The choice of paper proved crucial, with Turner experimenting extensively, testing materials ranging from rice paper and vellum paper to Bible paper. Bible paper, due to its thinness and opacity, was ideal, and Turner acquired it by extracting blank pages from Bibles in bookstores. To overcome detection methods, Turner coated the bills with matte lacquer spray, causing counterfeit detection pens to mark yellow. He also employed invisible ink UV pens to draw undetectable lines over the strips. For replicating color-shifting ink, he discovered a specific iridescent green eye shadow. Turner attended to tactile elements by using a fine-tip glue pen to create texture on Benjamin Franklin's shirt, navigating the intricate security features of the modern $100 bill. Turner found the patent rights related to the Bureau of Engraving and Printing's outsourcing of paper production and security features. This gave him insights into replicating the 3D security ribbon. Despite initial challenges and a steep learning curve, Turner's counterfeiting skills improved dramatically over time. Towards the end of his counterfeiting endeavors, he could produce a flawless counterfeit bill in just five or 10 minutes, showcasing the culmination of his trial and error process. Turner faced challenges with printers breaking down and paper jams during his counterfeiting operations. Despite using digital printers to minimize noise, the strong smell of the matte lacquer spray became an issue leading to awkward encounters with hotel maids who mistook it for paint fumes. To cover up suspicions, Turner fabricated stories about spilled nail polish or similar incidents. As a solution, Turner eventually rented a house equipped with ventilation fans to channel the noxious spray out the window. This allowed him to spray bills in front of an exhaust fan, mitigating the smell. Unlike large stockpiles, Turner opted for a daily laundering approach printing $2,000 to $5,000 in the morning and early afternoon, and then strategically spending the counterfeit bills throughout the day to avoid suspicion. Turner strategically targeted major corporations, retail, grocery stores, and Walmart-type outlets as the best places to break his counterfeit bills. He also sold counterfeit bills to individuals at a rate of 25 cents on the dollar. When breaking bills in stores, to avoid detection, Turner parked his car far away from the scene and refrained from using self-checkout machines, considering them too challenging to beat due to advanced photographic software. Despite initial nervousness, Turner's meticulous attention to detail and extensive knowledge of security features allowed him to spend thousands of dollars daily without raising suspicion. While a few instances occurred where cashiers discovered the counterfeit bills, most often, even if they suspected the bills were fake, they would return them. Over the two years of counterfeiting, Turner encountered only a handful of instances where cashiers turned him down. Staying relatively anonymous, Turner was cautious about surveillance, and even when there was a lookout for him and his wife at specific stores, it was based solely on pictures without knowing their names. Although the Secret Service had the capability to build cases, local police were limited in their ability to address counterfeiting. Turner's careful tactics and knowledge of security features helped him maintain a level of anonymity and avoid significant legal consequences 
during his counterfeiting operation. Knoxville served as a hub for out-of-town drug dealers due to the relatively higher prices of drugs compared to cities like Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, or Atlanta. People from these mid-level cities would acquire drugs at a lower cost in places like Detroit and then sell them at a higher price in Knoxville. Jeff Turner, who was addicted to drugs at the time, often used his counterfeit bills to buy drugs. In some cases, Turner was honest with certain dealers about his counterfeiting activities and even sold counterfeit bills to a drug dealer from Cleveland. However, there were instances where he used fake bills to purchase drugs from other dealers. One of these deals went sour when a person he had defrauded discovered that one of the bills got wet, causing the color-shifting makeup to smear off and reveal the counterfeit nature. Surprisingly, instead of retaliation, the dealer expressed admiration and interest in buying counterfeit bills. These individuals would then travel from Knoxville to cities like Detroit to buy heroin, incorporating thousands of dollars of Turner's counterfeit bills when replenishing their drug supply in their home city. Stores employ various methods to detect counterfeit bills, and many major retailers use counterfeit pens. Cashiers typically mark the bill, and if it reacts correctly, they accept it. For larger denominations used to purchase inexpensive items, cashiers may scrutinize the bill more closely, checking for security features like the strip and watermark, and holding the bill up to the light. The most reliable method for determining the authenticity of a bill is using a bill validator, especially for modern Blue Note $100 bills. These bills have a color-shifting feature. When held at a certain angle, the ink changes from metallic green to copper. They also use magnetic ink, allowing a neodymium magnet to lift the bill when folded in half on a table. Cashiers may employ additional methods, such as scratching the shirt on the bill to feel for a rigid texture created by the intaglio press during printing. Genuine bills also have a distinct crispness and texture. While legitimate money has a characteristic smell, Jeff Turner's counterfeit bills often passed this test, although a few people complained of a smell when the matte lacquer was sprayed too close to spending. Despite occasional suspicions, cashiers usually accepted the counterfeit bills, as they replicated all the security features that cashiers typically checked, giving little reason to doubt their authenticity. In 2019, Jeff Turner's counterfeiting operation came to an end when a dealer from Cleveland, who had purchased counterfeit money from him, got arrested. Faced with charges related to either the counterfeit money or heroin, the dealer quickly informed on Turner. Subsequently, the Secret Service raided Turner's hotel room while he was in the midst of printing. They discovered computers, printers, and approximately $6,400 in counterfeit bills that Turner tried to flush down the toilet. Caught red-handed, Turner was initially facing about three years in prison. However, the Secret Service offered Turner a deal. If he pleaded guilty, cooperated fully by revealing the details of his operation, and spared his wife from charges, they would reduce his sentence and keep restitution under $100,000. With cooperation, Turner's sentence was reduced to 10 to 16 months, significantly less than the maximum sentence of 20 years for his offenses. Reflecting on his actions, Turner acknowledges that white-collar criminals should face consequences, and he recognizes that he deserved to go to prison. Despite the challenges, the experience turned out to be transformative for Turner, leading to sobriety and ultimately being for the best in his particular case. Counterfeiting has become a lucrative enterprise for criminal organizations, particularly in other countries. Regions like Lima and Medellin are known for producing counterfeit currency, often associated with criminal organizations involved in the drug trade. While Jeff Turner has encountered bills that were claimed to come from South America, he notes that the quality wasn't impressive. Criminal organizations involved in the drug trade are often opportunistic, and if there's a chance to make money through counterfeiting or other means, they will exploit it. Turner mentions the existence of a super note, believed to be coming from North Korea and produced by the North Korean government. This super note is said to be virtually indistinguishable from legitimate currency, replicating all security features flawlessly. 
The sophistication of such operations underscores the global reach and complexity of counterfeit currency networks. Jeff Turner started counterfeiting at the age of 19 after reading The Art of Making Money, a book about Art Williams, a counterfeiter in Chicago. While the original idea came from the book, Turner developed his own methods. The bills he produced weren't highly sophisticated, but were sufficient for sale. After a friend overdosed and died, Turner stopped counterfeiting, fearing the consequences. However, he resumed the illegal activity later due to a desperate financial situation. Despite earning around a million dollars over his counterfeiting career, Turner believes his impact on the economy has been limited. However, locally, his actions may have contributed to a loss of trust in cash. Some stores in Knoxville, where Turner operated, no longer accept $100 bills due to increased vigilance. The repercussions of his actions have had a profound impact on Turner's life, leading to his imprisonment, separation from his wife, and challenges for his children. In the aftermath, Turner has turned his life around and is now the production manager at a legitimate printing and graphics company in Knoxville. While he still works with printing, he emphasizes that it's now legal and above board, signaling a positive change in his life.